to help you study for the final exam, I'm going to just walk you through this quick video just to remind ourselves and also just clarify for us some issues with topographic maps that I know some people had issues with a couple weeks ago on our topographic map lab. And just to highlight some of the main key components that I want you to know uh, related to topographic maps that could show up on the final exam. So first off, just a reminder, the separation or the difference between what a contour index is, which is the darker contour line that actually has an elevation stated. So in this example that I've drawn here, we have a couple contour indexes. We have this one at 500. And then we have this other highlighted one at 1,000, where the contour interval is that difference in elevation that's going to be between any two contour lines. And just a reminder that oftentimes, you know, maybe on an actual map this may be stated, but on the exam, what you may have to do is identify, well, what first you may want to identify what is the actual contour interval that we're seeing. So for example, you know, we can try and figure out what this contour interval is for this image by noting that there are five lines that, in this case, cover 500 units of elevation change. So whether that's meters, feet, in this case, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is that we can see from this first contour index that's at 500, we have one, two, three, four, five, until we hit that next contour ind uh, index that's at 1,000. And so we know that, again, because we have those five lines, the difference between 500 and 1,000 is 500. Again, units of elevation change, whether that's meters or feet. You can take that five lines of change and divide it by how much dis or um, excuse me, how much elevation is covered, so 500. And that gives us, for every contour, or excuse me, our contour interval then would be 100 units. Again, 100 feet, 100 meters, whatever it may be. And so we can then take that to noting differences between knowing what an elevation is exactly versus simply being only able to estimate an elevation at, based on where uh, that location falls on these contour lines or between these contour, uh, in, in between two contour lines or exactly on a contour line. So it's noting that in, this, in our cases here for A, B, and C, these locations, remember that if a point falls exactly on a line, we do know its exact elevation because we know anywhere along a contour line, its exact elevation. So in this case for A, we know that it's at 500 units, again, feet, meters, whatever you want to call it in this case, because it falls exactly on that line. But noting, for example, with B, we see, can see that it falls in between the 700 line and the 800 line, so we only you can estimate what its elevation is. And we know that really at, at the broadest, it could be anything between 701 and 799 because we don't have you know, its exact elevation listed in there. But usually to estimate that, we kind of have this squiggly line that we can draw, you know, that's an approximation. And usually you say the approximation or estimation is right in the middle of what the contour interval is set by. So we know that the contour interval is 100 meters or 100 feet, whatever it may be. In this case, so again, between 700 and 800. So in this case, to split the difference, if we split that down the middle, that would be 750. So we'd say it's approximately 750 units, but again, it really could be anywhere between essentially 701 and 799 because we know 700 and 800 actually fall on those two contour lines respectively, both below and above it. So similarly, noting with C, once again, we have that second contour index that's 1,000 here. We know that the next lineup would then be 1,100, 1,200, and we then could go to C. And if, again, the unit or if the location is not actually provided with an exact measured uh, elevation, for C, the best we would be able, be able to say is that it's approximately 1,250 units because we know that the lower bound in this case is 1,200, and we know that then the next contour interval, if there were to be one, would be 1,300, but we don't see one. 
So in this case, it falls between 1,200 and 1,300. Again, we split that difference and approximate it as 1,250. So in this case, you know, what this then leads us to is also making sure that we can identify different landscape features on these topographic maps. So as is being shown here, we can imagine this as a hill, roughly a generally circular hill, you know, where anywhere you're kind of going up in elevation uh, towards the top, and here's the hill top. So just to note some of these different types of landscape features that you want to be able to identify from topographic maps so to complex you know to make this a little bit more complex than just that simple hill now we not only have our hilltop here and but we also have ridges and valleys so noting ridges essentially you can look for these kind of v shapes uh, to our ridges that where the v is pointed outwards or away from the hilltop area where in the opposite case, a valley, once again, you might have a U or V-shaped um, area, but that it's, it's pointing inward comparatively. So knowing just the difference, how ridges kind of bulge outwards or are pointed outwards and valleys have that U or V-shaped uh, more pointed inwards and to help you separate each of those. And then contrastingly, I also want to make sure that we know uh, that when we see these tick marks on the inside of lines, that also uh, it's, that specifically denotes a depression, where that's a, where instead of going up in elevation, now we're going down in elevation. So just to make sure, uh, again, we can interpret all of this map correctly. So generally, so we have our 800 in unit line here, and we would be going up in elevation all the way up to our hilltop here, and noting. Once again, hopefully you can figure out our, based on our contour indexes, we have 800 here, 900 here. Again, one, two, three, four lines in this case, 100 units of change. So our contour interval in this case would be 25 units. And so in this case, noting, again, we have our 800 line here. Again, anywhere in between over here, we would start going up between 800 and 825, which would be that next line. But then with a the depression, when we have these tick marks pointed inwards, I want to note that, again, you would draw another 800 point of elevation here and note that from this starting point and going inwards, we're now starting to go down by that same contour interval. So anywhere between this 800 and the next uh, elevation, excuse me, contour line here, would be between 800 and 775. And this line here would be at 775. We have more tick marks, so it would be continuing to go down. And if we had a point in here, we would know that it's somewhere between 775 and 750. So just being able to identify all of these features and knowing how the elevations change based off of these uh, differences in, in the contour intervals and using those contour indices to calculate the contour intervals, being able to identify some of these landscape features, knowing how to estimate or to figure out elevation are these main features, our main concepts out of topographic maps that I want you to take away and from the course and as well you know, be up and ready to know for our final exam.